Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is June 3rd and today we're still taking a look at this system that spun some thunderstorms up the Puget Sound. As many of you know, this morning this is going to continue a thunderstorm threat, mainly from the Cascades East through the remainder of the day. But taking a look here at the water vapor imagery, you can see we have an atmospheric river headed our way, if you can believe it, here in early June. We'll take a look at the details on that here coming up. You can see some remnant convection across portions of Texas and Southern Plains here. And then you can see the intertropical convergent zone roaming across the planet down here towards or just north of the equator. But let's just dive into things here. Look at Spokane talking about the cool and wet weekend ahead. There is a chance of thunderstorms today. And there are some hydraulic concerns where any of these uh, thunderstorms train or they end up being a little bit heavier, especially over burn scar areas. So we're going to kind of do this again for portions of the eastern Washington. The flash flood watch has been dropped. There is a flood watch for portions of southeast Washington, northeast Oregon, though. Now, taking a look at this, we have the day one excessive rainfall outlook. Again, this is for that thunderstorm and heavier shower potential as it goes through Montana, Idaho, Washington, and Oregon. And on into day two, we also have this. We reintroduce this excessive rainfall potential here for the North California coast in through Oregon. And it talks about the atmospheric river even here that overlap these features will push a stream of moisture slash atmospheric river onshore beginning Sunday afternoon with precipitable water rising over an inch. So yeah, this is, I mean, this is getting kind of crazy here. We're into mid June or we're going to be into mid June here shortly. And we're still dealing with atmospheric rivers across the Pacific Northwest. So taking a look here, here's that precipitable water. And if I put this into motion, you can see this stretches all the way back across the Pacific Ocean. This subtropical tap is going to be just kind of slamming into the Oregon coast here as we go through Saturday night. And it finally comes to an end as we go through the day Sunday. But yeah, it's just kind of curious that we're still dealing with this on and through mid-June. Now taking a look here, you can see the jet stream as it moves across the Pacific here. And this jet stream out here is what's spawning that uh, precipitable water, this subtropical moisture into our region here, bringing some pretty good precipitation amounts that we're going to look at here in a second as well. And this is the European, this is the 06Z, and this kind of shows the total precipitation across the area. You can see that rainfall falling across the area today, and especially for some of the higher terrain. Again, the Okanagan Highlands up into BC, and you'll see this precip just kind of push into western Washington and Oregon. Look at these totals build up across even portions of northeast Washington and northeast Oregon. And this is going to help with some of the drought concerns across eastern Oregon as well. Much needed rainfall for them. But some of these totals are just kind of crazy. It looks like six inch plus along some of the coastal ranges and some of the Cascades getting good rainfall amounts. And yeah, so this is more like November versus early to mid-June now. Now looking at SeaTac yesterday, it was a nice warm day. You'll probably notice how you probably noticed how muggy it was yesterday. 73 with some really high humidity values and a lot of water vapor in the atmosphere yesterday is what helped spawn some of the thunderstorms across the region uh, last night and into this morning. And looking at this, you can see the thunderstorm threats generally confined from now on uh, Cascades East. And you can see some slight um, potential here for some severe thunderstorms across New Mexico, Texas, Colorado, Kansas. So heads up if you're traveling out there. Be aware of that. A little bit of a tornado threat there on the New Mexico border. And wind and hail threat also. Potentially some large hail out there as well. So taking a look at day two, you can see that thunderstorm threat pushes off into Montana. A little bit of a severe threat across portions of Kansas on in through Central Tornado Alley there. Day three, you can see that we reintroduced that um, uh, thunderstorm threat through eastern Washington, eastern Oregon, Idaho, and Montana. It does include Portland and just clips Eugene, but kind of keeps the Puget Sound out of this area. We'll continue to watch that and see how this develops as we go on into the day three forecast. Here's the NAMP 3KM checking out temperatures. We are going to cool down a bit, but you can still see we do get up into the mid-60s, it looks like, for portions of western Washington, Oregon, eastern Washington up into the mid 70s as we go through the day today going on in through saturday you'll see we cool down of course overnight and we warm up not too bad across willamette valley and puget sound all the way up into southern bc here eastern washington it's going to be under some clouds so it looks like that temperatures are going to calm down a bit maybe some low 70s on in through saturday across eastern Washington. As we continue to have this moisture pumped into our region, we're not going to warm up as much and we're going to remain below average temperature generally. 
Now taking a look here, this is with the NAM 3 KM. This batch of showers here is kind of what caused those thunderstorms across portions of Seattle North to this morning. And that should be pushing off. Maybe some thunderstorm threat still exists up through southern BC, North Cascades. But this should eventually move on and be... Uh, mainly in eastern Washington, Oregon, Idaho threat as we go through the afternoon today. Although as you see, as we move through early afternoon, we might have to watch for a stray thunderstorm for portions of western Washington and even Portland North, mainly into the foothills and the Cascades. So heads up for that. But generally, the thunderstorm threat is going to push east of the Cascades today. But you can see this precipitation just continues on through the day Saturday. And this is what's bringing that, this is that atmospheric river showing here on the Doppler radar here, bringing those really big precipitation totals especially for the higher terrain of Washington, Oregon, British Columbia, and down into Northern California through the day Sunday. And you can see we really don't get a break even on Sunday coming up here. So, yeah, we're going to be dealing with this for a while, and we're going to take a look at the extended here. I know we had some uh, disagreement yesterday about were we going to warm up next week or not, and it looks like we have a verdict on that, so stay with me here for a second. This is the European just kind of showing these systems moving through. Saturday, you can see the atmospheric river precipitation starting to affect the region, building up those precipitation totals, and we really don't get much of a break. It looks like maybe next Tuesday we're going to have a nice day, and we'll see if we can extend that into uh, Tuesday, Wednesday night days but we're going to take a look at the extended here just in a moment but first let's look at the lightning really quick here on the most recent european run uh, as you can see we moved through friday morning the european did pick up some of that thunderstorm activity seattle north this morning and it woke a lot of you up this morning but you can see now it's going to be eastern washington oregon really with the main thunderstorm threat it does have a little bit of something coming through here in the afternoon so just watch for a stray thunderstorm western washington mainly portland north through the foothills watch out for that but you can see the main threat lies east of the cascades so going on through saturday here Let's see what the thunderstorm threat is really not much across the region you can see sunday we reintroduce this maybe late or actually early sunday morning there is a little bit of a chance some instability with that next system coming here again it's going to be mainly east of the cascades but there is a chance through western washington and oregon so we'll watch out for this on late morning into the afternoon on sunday for just how much of a threat we're going to get here for western portions now checking this out this is the extended forecast we're going to look at now this again this is 18,000 feet 500 millibar mean rock ridge and trough position across the area here goes our trough that's just badgering us, bringing our atmospheric river through the area today. Big precipitation amounts across the region. Let's back up to the zero Z run of yesterday afternoon to kind of look at the extended. You can see Tuesday shaping up to be a nice day, some transient ridging here before the next system brushes the area. The ridging tries to hold on and build, but it kind of flattens out pretty quickly here with the strong Gulf of Alaska trough in place through next weekend so it does not look like the european is going to warm us up next weekend let's see what the gfs said remember yesterday had a nice ridge building across the area and we're going to take a look at that right now so gfs what do you have to say let's go ahead and check out the 06 run actually sorry this is the canadian model let's just go ahead and run this this is yesterday afternoon's run you see the troughing bringing the atmospheric river through and then finally some ridging as we go through Tuesday. Maybe we'll get a nice day Wednesday. And you'll see how the Canadian builds the ridge a bit more, but strong Gulf of Alaska troughing. And this is a tight gradient, so we're probably going to be getting clouds and maybe some precipitation across the region here. As a strong ridge sets up mainly North California, Southern Oregon. So there is some disagreement for next weekend still between the Euro and the Canadian. But this Gulf of Alaska troughing is pretty strong here and this is a pretty tight gradient so this does not look like a big heat wave for portions of western washington and oregon there's going to be strong onshore flow going on here and especially through british columbia so as we go on and through later that week and you can see the trough finally settling back down over the area this would be sunday night now checking out the gfs this is let's check out the 06z this was late last night's run of course the troughing good agreement short term as always and then you can see the transient ridging building in here for a nice day Tuesday before a system starts to move in early Wednesday morning. Then you can see the GFS build that ridging back, but again, strong 
Gulf of Alaska troughing here with that ridge mainly to the east here is going to keep a, a decent onshore flow for portions of Washington, Oregon. This could warm up some of the interior portions and we'll just have to watch how that goes, but it does not look like some very warm temperatures are coming for Seattle and Portland here coming up through the next weekend. Although the ridging will be close and we will have to watch it. The European really does not agree with that and it says we are not going to warm up too much next weekend. So I'm not sure. Yeah, they, I'm sure it's not much of a surprise to people that we are not going to warm up too much with the way this spring has been shaping up here. But maybe things will change in the summer. But look at some of these troughs that continue to move through the area through the extended on the GFS. I mean, I know this is fantasy land, but it's just kind of funny to watch these just bombard the area with trough after trough across the Pacific Northwest. Now you can see the GFS really back down on its warm temperatures coming up for next week and it had some temperatures up in the low 80s for Portland that's backed way off and this is more average temperatures after we go through this troughing this week and we warm up a bit for that nice day on Tuesday but then there's some question on just how close that Gulf of Alaska trough and what kind of system that's going to be spawning across the region here and you can see generally below average on in through the extended on the GFS. And this is for the European. You can see the nice day on Tuesday before we kind of drop back down to below average temperatures with the troughing nearby. And checking out for Seattle on nice day on Tuesday coming up. So you might want to target that one if you've got any yard work to do or what not. And you can see we're kind of about average as we go through the extended here for SeaTac. So not bad temperatures coming up here. But again, there's going to be systems nearby. And this forecast is probably going to change. Confidence level is not high. And we'll continue to watch that. Here's the European SeaTac. And it, it even doesn't show much of a bump on Tuesday, although it looks like it to be the warmest day mid next week before we go back into some trophy and having systems move through the area. So we'll continue to watch that. And checking out the sea surface temperature, this is June 2nd. You can see La Nina is still in charge here as that upwelling off the coast of South America extends across the Central Pacific. And Nino 3.4, the area where we measure La Nina or ENSO conditions, is right here across the central equatorial region here and solidly in La Nina territory currently. And I just wanted to show you guys this because I do show this chart quite a bit during the winter. You can see the landslide. Um, index is way down. We don't have to worry about that. And you can see the drought monitor here. This is for the West. Look, we've been eating into the drought. Some portions of the Columbia Basin or down here into North Oregon are no longer in drought conditions. You can still see that exceptional drought still exists for portions of Eastern Oregon, especially the East Slopes of the Cascades. So we're looking for improvement there and we might get it here through this weekend. Let's go to start of the water year. This is September last year. Check out that drought. Almost the entire region was under, really, the entire region was under some kind of drought through last year. You can see the exceptional moved all the way up through eastern Washington. And you can see just how much of that has been reduced. And that's really a drastic change across portions of northern Oregon. There was went from exceptional drought late September last year to no drought this year. So that's good news for a lot of the area. You can see California has been relieved of some of that exceptional drought as well. Although some of that new area does uh, extend down towards Las Vegas. I know you guys know about, probably heard about Lake Mead. If not, Google that and see some of the images coming out there with the low water levels down there. But as you can see through the Idaho Panhandle too, really a big swing in the drought conditions there. So good news there. And I just wanted to show you guys this probably one more time for the the time of year we're dealing with here. This is avalanche conditions. Really, there's no concerns for the backcountry as far as avalanche concerns right now. Really, the main threat at this time of year is uh, thunderstorms, lightning, and maybe some flash flooding, heavy rain, especially if you're in any kind of burn scar area. So mainly for, you know, a lot of the slopes of eastern Washington do have some burn scars as well as up towards the Okanagan Highlands. So yeah, you guys can see the atmospheric river coming. We're going to remain wet and cool on through the weekend, on and through Monday. Before we warm up, it looks like a bit Tuesday before another trough. Gulf of Alaska low is roaming around out here, and we'll just see how much of that's going to affect the Pacific Northwest. As a GFS, actually all three models do show some ridging building. The European flattens it out the most. The GFS and the Canadian try to build it in a bit, but it still looks like it's going to be onshore flow and not a big heat wave coming for western portions of the state of Oregon, Washington, British Columbia. So anyway, we'll take a look at this again tomorrow. Watch out for the thunderstorms, mainly cascades east from here on out during the day today. And leave some comments below, you know, subscribe if you guys haven't it really helps the page. You guys are responsible for this page and you're helping it grow. And we're getting the word out here about, 
you know, just general weather awareness across Pacific Northwest. So we'll do this again tomorrow and I'll talk to you guys then.